I have never been so excited in my life to make a video. I am mere hours away from jetting off on my summer holidays. It is five past eleven at night, but you couldn't stop me making this. Our Celtic one step closer to maybe, just maybe, having Brendan Rodgers back as Celtic manager. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Yes, though, this was this was not planned. This wasn't meant to happen. As you all know, last night I done a stream, a farewell, as I was away on holiday for a week. I said I'd take my camera just in case anything big dropped. Oh, it dropped. It dropped just in time. Some huge news coming out tonight, some developments to follow. But oh, let's just get right into this because I am smiling ear to ear. My excitement cannot be contained. I don't want to get my hopes up too much, but sometimes you just can't help it. So let's discuss that bombshell that's been dropped this evening. Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm! Wait, 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 wait! Everybody just calm down! Celtic have spoken to Brendan Rodgers about sensational return to Parkhead. That is the headline. Stephen McGowan in the mail this evening. It's going to be all over the back pages as we all wake up. It's going to be dominating social media as we all wake up. This is huge news. Celtic apparently holding talks with Brendan Rodgers. The story goes on to say that Michael Nicholson and Chris Mackay have flown to Mallorca. Yes, they've flown to Mallorca for in-person talks with Brendan Rodgers about becoming the next Celtic manager. Listen, it doesn't stop there. Apparently, there's more talks going on. I think we're now at the stage where Celtic may have identified their top candidates for the job. Discussions will now be ongoing throughout the week, but shall we just start with the man who I have been championing for the job since the rumours started of Ange Postecoglou leaving? Let's start with Brendan Rodgers. I'm going to go on a limb here. And I am going to say that if Brendan Rodgers now wants the job, if Brendan Rodgers wants to be manager of Celtic, I have a feeling the job is now his for the taking. Um, we have a situation here where Brendan Rodgers, on paper, is probably the most qualified, the most experienced, the most successful man that could potentially take this job now. And the in-person talks look as though they're about to begin. I don't know if they're going to go for a wee drink or two over in Mallorca. Might hit up the MAGA strip. Might jump into bananas for a wee while. But the the fact of the matter is the in-person talks look ready to begin. Michael Nicholson and Chris McKay, of course, our, our senior management at Celtic Football Club, will be talking to Brendan. And I think now it's just probably a case of seeing where both parties lie, what Celtic are willing to give Brendan Rodgers and what Brendan Rodgers expects to get from Celtic Football Club. Will the money be right? Will the, will the backing be right? Will the expectations be right? Of course, whoever takes this job, they have a tough act to follow. Ange Postecoglou bringing us two of the most entertaining years that we've had as Celtic supporters. But let's not forget that Brendan Rodgers is a man who, before Ange Postecoglou was in our lives and, and winning trophies for us, is a man who came up here and won seven out of seven. And I've been saying it from day dot, since the moment Ange was linked with a move to Spurs, there was only one man in my mind for me who could replace Ange Postecoglou, and his name happens to be Brendan Rodgers. It's going to be a crazy few days, and... With these in-person talks going on, it is a one step closer to a potential reappointment and the return of Brendan Rodgers to Celtic Park. It's one that is going to divide thousands of Celtic supporters. But for me, it's a no-brainer. And if the expectations of Brendan Rodgers aren't too wild, throw whatever we can at it. It's my opinion. I, I know not all of you will agree with me and a lot of you don't want Brendan Rodgers back. That's fine. I, I know he'll win you over very quickly, but this is one that Celtic can't pass up on and if this is the one chance that Brendan Rodgers now gets to make it up to Celtic supporters for the fashion that he left the club in his first tenure this is the time he's got to take it it could be potentially his only opportunity to come back and make up for that here at Celtic Football Club so I hope that his expectations and his demands aren't too um, out of the ordinary 
and I hope it's something that Michael Nicholson and, and Chris McKay can sit down and work out over a pint in Mallorca because this is huge. This this is a massive opportunity and one that I don't think Celtic should pass up on. I don't think it's any guarantee that Brendan Rodgers sits down with, with Michael Nicholson and takes this job. But we're going to talk about the other news that broke in a moment and other candidates who are there. For me, this has got to be the top candidate. This has got to be the guy that Dermot Desmond wants, that Michael Nicholson wants, that Chris McKay wants, that the whole board want. This is one that brings... And I don't want to jinx anything, but the best chance of success to Celtic Football Club, I think, is by appointing Brendan Rodgers as manager. And I think there's plenty of talented coaches out there, and, and one of the guys we're going to talk about in a minute is also a very exciting and a very, very optimistic choice for Celtic Football Club, a very forward-thinking choice. And a lot of people will keep going about, oh, it's, it's not inspiring, it's backwards going for Rodgers. He was here before he left this. This is a winner. This is a man who knows how to win. I like winning. Celtic like winning. We as fans like winning. What do you not understand about the maths here? This is the best chance of bringing guaranteed success. Uh, and I think we'd be stupid to pass up on it. I genuinely think that he will go into these discussions with the other candidates being top of the list. I think the stumbling box will probably come down to stuff like backing, wages. Maybe that will sway the favour to other candidates if they want less of the club. But this is one that Celtic got to sit down and realise what he brought to us the last time. The Rodgers revolution is what kick-started the dominance we're seeing right now. You know, he came in, he changed the landscape when he was in charge, and he kicked off a double treble, basically a treble treble, which led to a quadruple treble, and now another treble. It all started with Brendan Rodgers. And if we want to keep doing that, I feel like Brendan Rodgers gives you the best chance of doing that. We await to see the developments. Let's hope the trip to Mallorca goes smoothly. Some of you might not want it to, but I've made my opinion perfectly clear. I'm no, I'm not dancing around anything. That's what I want. That's it. Throw the money at him, Celtic. Do you want Brendan back? Let me know in the comments. I know a lot of you don't. Oh, I'm excited, but it doesn't stop there. The record also reported this evening as I record this video that Celtic have also held talks with Francesco Farioli. He has held talks with the Parkhead Chiefs yesterday morning, as this video will come out, as the, uh, the record understands that the article goes on to say that a meeting between club power brokers and 34-year-old Farioli, known in Italy as the Young Deserbi, took place last week as Celtic Chiefs continue their search for the Aussie replacement. One that I, honestly, if it doesn't happen with Brendan, I'd be very happy with Farioli. He's someone who, yeah, kind of fits in that same mould. You know, I said I wasn't too keen on the Maresca type appointments, ones that haven't really done it at the, the top level yet, you know, the managerial level of things, not, you know, assistance and stuff. But Farioli's had a crack at things. He's managed over in Turkey, he had two spells over there um, with Antalya Spore and Fatih Karagmruk. That is not how you see it, but he's been over in Turkey, he's done it, it was actually not too bad, now he's been down with, with Roberto De Zerbi at Brighton, don't listen to me, lies, he's not working with De Zerbi at Brighton, slip of the tongue, he used to work with De Zerbi at Sassuolo and Benevento in Italy, not at Brighton though, not there right now, he's a coach that's been very highly spoke of and as we've seen, the young De Zerbi, as soon as you hear De Zerbi's name, I'm interested because I love Roberto De Zerbi, I think he's one of the most exciting managers that I've seen in my lifetime. Um, but Farioli is someone who's apparently been spotted by Celtic, he's apparently held talks as well. It looks as though we are now at a point where Celtic have identified their top choices and they're now speaking with them. Just a bit more on Francesco Farioli, in case you don't know, his two spells in Turkey managed around 75 games, winning 31 of them, losing 24 and drawing 20, a win rate of 41.33%. This is one that could be exciting, I think, with the brand of football that they are currently installing into that Brighton team, it would fit perfectly here at Celtic, and I think it's one that a lot of supporters already on social media are showing a lot of excitement for, a lot of uh, people up for the appointment of, of Farioli if he's a, a genuine contender um, but it's just very interesting now that we're getting all of these talks about the potential meetings going on between the Farioli in the club Rogers in the club could the announcement of a manager be as soon as you know the next few days 
um, because it looks as though Celtic have sussed out their top options. In amongst that, it seems like Enzo Moresca's name is still towards the top of the list. It seems like he's still in the top three candidates. So maybe it is a case now of Celtic looking at Farioli, Moresca, Brendan Rodgers, sitting down with all three, and three of them, seeing what their vision for the club is, and then going from there. Now the question is, who lies as the favourite? Because to me, I think it is Rodgers. I think Rodgers would be at the top of the list. Because it's not exactly like he's going to come in with a vision that's going to take us backwards. He'll want to move on from what we've already built. And he'll want to do something more different and better than his first spell here at the club. But maybe, maybe the Celtic board are sitting there going, well, the likes of Farioli, he might bring something completely fresh to the club. It might be the way forward. There is a lot to sit down and weigh up. It is so exciting. The thought, potentially, Brendan Rodgers back pointing his finger in the sky like the, the tribal chief, the treble chief. You know, it really gets my blood pumping and I hope that the talks go very, very well. But failing the appointment of Brendan Rodgers, if that wasn't to happen, I'm very happy with the, the likes of Farioli being in the discussions. The fact that the club have opened out and, and uh, opened up and spoke to him. Um, yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I might be going on my holidays soon. It's going to be a mad mad few days and i will try and keep you updated as these talks commence and develop and yada yada and i'll give all my opinion make sure and follow me on my new twitter and keep up with me while i'm traveling i've got the camera and such packed well i've not it's out right now obviously mm. but it will be packed again it was already packed i've had to take it out the bag because brendan rogers has apparently talking to the new yorker ah, exciting <sighs> good night